Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Chen Wen Liu and I'm a hip and knee replacement surgeon. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about post-operative nutrition. Now often we have a lot of emphasis on the physical aspects of hip and knee replacement recovery. Post-operative nutrition and pre-operative nutrition as well are both extremely important in optimizing recovery from any surgery. We know that the body does go through some strain after surgery. And that can be from the multiple agents that you'll receive from the anesthetic, just to the overall things like blood loss, discomfort, swelling, and just the general body's reaction to surgery. Now, often it is overlooked about nutrition when it comes time to healing, but we know from a lot of data that ensuring that your diet is of a high quality, that you're receiving enough hydration and nutrition, and all of those things will add up to a much speedier recovery and much less potential for complications, especially from things like wound healing. In particular, we look at some of the factors such as protein usage. We know that protein has a huge impact upon wound healing. And if you do not feel like your diet is a very good one, then it often is the case that we would suggest for you to seek some advice from either a dietitian or your general practitioner. In general, for most people who have quite a balanced diet, this really won't apply for most of you, as often you are getting enough nutrients through regular whole foods that it isn't required that you supplement those with anything else. Now, if you feel like your diet is lacking or you're really not feeling that hungry before or after the surgery, it probably isn't a bad idea to start some general health increases in your supplementation to ensure that there are no deficiencies. As you're probably aware, often vitamins can be taken on a daily basis with very little value if you're well nourished. However, if you feel like you're not, then taking a general health multivitamin may help to bolster some of those deficiencies in your diet if you feel like you need them. Now, often one of the things that we look for is protein usage. And after surgery, taking some protein may well aid in the improvement of your wound healing capabilities and your general well-being. Remember that during surgery, you'll lose a little bit of blood. So restoring things like protein and iron are really important in ensuring a speedy recovery and one where your body returns back to its normal homeostasis quicker. Now we often look at supplementation in the case of people who are struggling to heal their wounds or in those people who have other metabolic conditions that may impact on how they absorb food or how they get nourished from their regular uh, supplements. Some of the supplements which can be beneficial for you in the wound healing and recovery perspective are things like iron supplementation, vitamin C supplementation, and protein supplementation. And in general, it is advisable to consider those three things in your diet. And if you feel like you're not getting enough of those things, please feel free to talk to your general practitioner or to us at your consult about which ones may be beneficial for you. Hydration is vitally important to your recovery. Now before the surgery, because you will fast on the day of surgery prior to the anesthetic, it is really important that you maintain excellent hydration in the 24 hours leading up into surgery. You'll receive a fasting time before surgery and we need you to fast for a minimum of six hours before the operation. The reason for fasting is so that you have nothing left in the stomach in case you regurgitate those during the anesthetic and then aspirate them into the lungs. And that can certainly occur when you're half asleep or asleep during the operation. We will not proceed with surgery if patients have not fully fasted as this can pose a bit of an additional risk for you. Now with the fasting status, it means that you won't get to eat or drink during that period. And that means that if you haven't hydrated well before that period, you may find it very difficult to get through that fasting period. So I would highly recommend that you plan the 24 hours beforehand to perhaps overhydrate slightly so that you cope with that period very well. Now during surgery, we place a drip line into the arm that enable us to give you vitally important medications in addition to those that help you with the anesthetic. Now as part of that, we also give you IV fluids. 
and that just rehydrates the body and brings it back to its normal position so that we don't have any issues with dehydration after the operation. If you're feeling sick or if you feel like you can't drink water or other liquids after the surgery, we will could probably continue giving you that IV fluids through the drip line. However, if you're drinking well and going to the toilet without any issues, then we'll probably take that IV fluid out so that you can get back to your normal routine as quickly as possible. Now, after the surgery, if you can drink, please feel free to drink to thirst or drink as much as you feel like you can, as it is a good way to flush out all of the things that we give you during the anesthetic and after the surgery to make things feel as good as possible. And often patients will feel a little bit lethargic or a little bit tired throughout the day if their hydration levels are low. In the following few weeks after surgery, please feel free to get back to normal. Often our patients will feel like they go to the toilet a little bit more to pee after the operation and that's just the body clearing out all of those agents that we give you and bringing it back to what it was before you had the surgery itself. So don't feel alarmed, everything will return back to normal. As you can see, we do value all of those holistic portions of our patients and their journey and providing you with some information about nutrition and hydration is certainly important. There's so much more to talk about with nutrition and hydration. However, a lot of it is probably not applicable to 99% of the population. So if you have a specific requirement, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask us. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video and I hope this one was useful for you. Thank you.